Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Manitoba Legislature. I've been standing here these last few minutes, but I assure you, you're going to hear less from uh, me than anyone else. So without further ado, I do want to welcome Premier Calvin Gertson to say a few words. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew Micklefield, our great uh, MLA from the constituency of Rossmere. It is an honor to be here in this beautiful building, the Manitoba Legislature, together with uh, our Minister of Health and, uh, and uh, our great advocate for today's announcement, Minister Audrey Gordon, representatives from the various, uh, our various stakeholders and family representatives here as well. There's been many announcements when it comes to health over the last 18 months, and of course, the vast majority of them would be related to, to the pandemic, to COVID-19. And I think perhaps one of the frustrations for many Manitobans uh, dealing with uh, health challenges that have nothing to do with COVID-19 is they may feel that their own individual concerns uh, and challenges have been lost in the pandemic. And I want to assure them and remind all Manitobans, and even as we deal with what is the challenge of our lifetime when it comes to the pandemic and the response to the pandemic, that all of the health concerns that existed before, of course, they continue on. In some ways, they've been exasperated. All of the challenges that people had, were dealing with before, health-related, that had nothing to do with COVID-19, continue on and in some ways have been exasperated but our government has not lost focus on those even while all the other challenges are happening on COVID-19. So today's announcement is a reflection of that. It's a reflection uh, that those who are living with uh, cystic fibrosis or other uh, illnesses that are impacted by today's announcement that their advocacy uh, was always heard, that their voices were always listened to, and things in healthcare and things in government don't always happen as fast as we would like. Uh, that is part of, of government and also part of the healthcare field. Uh, as tests are being uh, done, as there's proof of, uh, of effectiveness that is being done, and then sometimes as there are negotiations between the various provinces and drug manufacturers that have to be done. And that can be frustrating sometimes uh, that those things take longer than any of us like. But they do ultimately lead us here today. And a day like today, which is an important day, and a day that happens not because of government, not because of the role that I play, uh, and I would not want to ever diminish the important role that the Minister of Health plays, but it happens because there are advocates in our community. And it happens because there are families who say this is really, really important to us. So on behalf of our government, on behalf of uh, our cabinet, on behalf of our MLAs and all Manitobans, we want to thank the advocates who have gotten us here today. Thank you for your work. Thank you for reminding us that there are many important things that are happening beyond the pandemic. And uh, I'm very excited about today's announcement, as I know you are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. At this time, I would like to introduce and invite to the podium Minister Audrey Gordon. Good afternoon, and uh, I'd like to extend thanks to Premier Kelvin Gertson for joining me for this very important announcement as well as Mike Payne, who's the Executive Director of Nine Circles Community Health Centre, Patty Tweed, representing Cystic Fibrosis Canada, and Jackie and Dennis, um, Marilyn Snar. Uh, they are community members of Cystic Fibrosis Canada, and I'm so thrilled to have you here in the Manitoba Legislature with me. Today, I'm pleased to announce the Manitoba government is adding new drugs to the provincial formulary making trikafta for cystic fibrosis and HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis PrEP available through the Manitoba Pharmacare program. Through Manitoba's participation in the Pan-Canadian Pharmaceutical Alliance, Manitoba is now able to provide access to transformational treatment. Trikafta has helped tens of thousands of people 
with cystic fibrosis live their lives normally instead of having to struggle for every breath. PrEP is an antiretroviral drug that greatly reduces the risk of HIV infection. These additions to the Manitoba drug formulary will ensure that eligible patients can access both Trikafta and HIV PrEP drugs if they're eligible for pharmacare or receive health coverage from employment and, and income assistance. This is an important announcement for Manitobans. Adding these two drugs to the provincial formulary will dramatically change the lives of Manitobans living with cystic fibrosis or who are at risk of HIV exposure. Thank you to everyone for being here today. Thank you, Minister, for those words and that wonderful announcement. At this, at this time, uh, I would like to uh, invite Patty Tweed, a cystic fibrosis advocate, to the podium to share some remarks. Good afternoon. My name is Patty Tweed, and I am a CF mom and the lead Manitoba advocate for Cystic Fibrosis Canada. Today I would like to give you a little glimpse into the cystic fibrosis community so that you may know how much today's announcement means to us. There are those among us who have prayed every day for this day, for this announcement, and we who know them well pray along with them. People who live with the PTSD that comes from knocking on heaven's door and, by grace, coming back to fight another day. Others for whom the announcement comes too late, who have left their legacy of incredible strength. It is for these CF warriors and for the little ones who dutifully take their pills and do hours of treatments every day so that they may meet this announcement with their bodies as healthy as possible. It is for these people that we have had the will and the determination to make our story loud. My son Devon is 38 years old. He is one of a very few people in Canada so far who has been able to access Trikafta through private insurance. A week or so after starting the drug this summer, Devon called me from the ultimate field at the end of a game. Mom, he said, I played full on, flat out, full game, no problem, not a single cough. For Devon and for those Manitobans and Canadians who can access Trikafta in the days and weeks to come, the future is bright. They can go to school, to work, plan careers, get married, plan families. If I may speak for CF parents like myself, I can say that after decades of quietly guarding precious lives and raising research funds through bake sales and swimathons, while caring for loved ones with complex and often devastating medical conditions, 21st century science has given us the single greatest innovation in CF treatment that this community has ever known. A treatment that can improve the quality and quantity of life for 90% of CF sufferers. The research will continue until there is no one left behind. Our cystic fibrosis health story is unique, and yet similar stories abound in the rare disease community. We have hopefully paved the way so that other rare disease communities will not have to work this hard and this long to access their own right to breathe, whatever that may mean for them. It has taken too long for complex access systems to catch up to the science. But we celebrate today. A huge goal has been accomplished in Manitoba and across Canada. This news is wonderful, but we need to dot the I's and cross the T's. 
we won't sleep well until these amazing drugs and the ones that will come after are actually in the hands of the patients they are meant to serve. As we have worked diligently to engage and educate Canadians and Manitobans, we have made many friends in all political parties. The right to breathe freely is a human, humanitarian issue worth fighting for, and they have responded to the call. Thank you, Minister Gordon, Premier Gertson, and your team. And thank you all of the advocates, the caregivers, and the decision makers who have made this wonderful news a reality today. Thank you. Thank you, Patty, for those uh, wonderful remarks. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Jackie and Dennis Snar to the podium to share some comments. Good afternoon, Premier Gertsen, Minister Gordon, and your colleagues, honored guests and fellow attendees. As grandparents, we hope for our grandchildren to know a life of physical health as well as a mental well-being, to be able to dream and to follow their dreams, to experience the wonder and joy of life to its fullest. Today's announcement that Manitoba Health will be providing Trikafta will allow our grandson and Manitobans living with cystic fibrosis to enjoy improved health, allowing them to explore their lives more fully and share their knowledge and experiences with all of humanity. We are grateful to the healthcare team members, the researchers, the cystic fibrosis community and supporters, and to Manitoba Health for the promising future that is now possible for our grandson. Thank you. Mike Payne, I think you're next. Is that right? Yeah. Why don't you come on up and share uh, share some comments with us? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Payne, I'm the Executive Director at Nine Circles Community Health Centre. And for folks who don't know, Nine Circles is a health and social service delivery agency that supports Manitobans living with HIV throughout the province of Manitoba, um, as well as folks in the downtown Point Douglas area who need support. Um, I could not be more grateful to Minister Gordon and the staff of Manitoba Health, the Manitoba HIV Program, and Nine Circles Community Health Centre for making this happen. PrEP is a resource that's been available um, for quite a long time. Um, we, we've, we share that experience and, and we're hopeful um, that that length of time is, is reflected on and, and thought about in terms of the future. Um, but PrEP is a game changer in Manitoba as it has been in other places across the country. Um, PrEP is, is well proven um, that individuals who are at risk for HIV infection, um, taking PrEP um, in consultation with their healthcare provider significantly reduces the risk of HIV transmission. In Manitoba, um, we have had the, one of the highest rates of HIV infections in Canada, and our epidemiology clearly shows that most of those communities at the highest risk for HIV have been the ones that are least likely to afford PrEP. It's very, very much been an intervention that's been available to people with privilege. Um, and something that we've um, long argued um, is very harmful um, in our provincial strategy, both in health, um, in economic recovery, and in every way when, we, when our most vulnerable communities um, cannot be met um, with the resources that are available to keep them safe. The inclusion of PrEP in the formula area, as I mentioned, is a game changer and um, will definitely improve opportunities for HIV prevention. I have no doubt that there are people who I would have met at Nine Circles through the Manitoba HIV program that I will never meet over the next couple years because of this policy change and I'm really is the reason why I'm most grateful. 
Um, I say, you know, we're, we're partially there because of this policy change because now we need to get it out there. And so I really call now on health and social service leaders um, to pay attention to the announcement, to read the materials that come out next, be aware of PrEP so you can help your community be aware of PrEP. It's only going to work if folks are aware of the opportunity. I also call on family physicians and other pre prescribers in the system to do the same. People are going to need you to offer them this resource. You're going to need to be able to talk to them about why they may need it. You're going to be able to need to offer it to them, and that means you need to educate yourself. So I ask that you do that quickly because the demand is high, um, and I alert you to a webinar on December 8th. You can go to mbhiv.ca for more information, and right there we'll give you an opportunity to register for a webinar to learn how to do this so you can hit the ground running. Thank you again for, for this wonderful news. It's greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you in advance for those providers who I know are going to seize this opportunity so that we can really take, take the reins on, on what's going on with HIV in Manitoba and make some meaningful change. Thanks. Thank you, Mike, for your comments and uh, enthusiasm and for all of you who have attended here this afternoon. Uh, thus ends the uh, speaking part of this afternoon's program. There will be now some photos and possibly uh, questions after that. So I'm going to hand over to the people who organize photos and let them sort out who stands where. And uh, I'm told, as I just said, there will be some opportunity for questions following those photographs. Thank you all for being here and I'll allow uh, the others to choreograph the next few moments. Thanks again. Uh, I think it's like Mike said, it's, it's getting the word out and making sure uh, prescribers, uh, primary care, uh, clinics are aware and we will be doing that through social media, through the department contacting all our, our providers and making sure they are aware. Uh, so a communication goes out quite broadly to uh, pharmacies and, and cl clinics all across the province. Yeah, so they, they will have to work with their clinician uh, to go over the criteria in terms of their, their, their lung capacity or other um, um, issues that they may have related to cystic fibrosis, but that's all done through their primary care physician or the specialist that they may be working with. I, I know that there's over uh, 200 individuals uh, here in Manitoba uh, diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. I, I don't have, Mike, maybe you have the number for how many people will benefit from PrEP. I don't have that number with me at the moment. Yeah, I, I, because it's a preventative intervention, I don't really have a number, but I do know um, where they've been able to really roll out PrEP in a significant way in British Columbia, in Ontario. Um, they've seen anywhere from a, a 20 to 30 percent reduction um, in new infections fairly quickly once PrEP, PrEP really rolls out, if the community works well to do that well. And so I can't speak to a number um, of how many people would be on PrEP. Um, I can, I'm looking for and what we'll look for is to see some changes um, in the number of new infections that we have every year um, within particularly within some of the most vulnerable populations is that helpful um, well we're, stats are a little bit behind because of COVID but I will say that we we generally have between a hundred and hundred and forty new cases every year um, we expect that numbers 
growing slightly, and it's also getting more complicated. It's getting younger, um, and again, it's, it's merging more and more into communities such as the Indigenous community, um, the African Caribbean Black community, um, and we're seeing increases again within the, the MSM community or, or the, the gay community as well. And so some of those community areas will be one of the places where we really focus our efforts in terms of promoting the opportunity of PrEP. Why were what, I'm sorry? Um, well, my preference is that folks would engage representatives of those communities. I'm not well placed to represent them, but certainly from what I hear from folks in the community, it's experiences of discrimination and systemic barriers. There's lots of reasons for folks in those communities to not yet trust um, health and social service systems, and so it's our work collectively to, to do things differently so that people feel safer and more comfortable. Um, part of that is making sure that we're responding to the needs that they present them, and PrEP is a good example of one of those needs. I know that uh, Minister Gordon will have some um, views on some of the process, but when it comes to uh, some of the medications, you'll know that there is a process for negotiation of the price. So provinces get together uh, once a drug has gone through the Health Canada regulatory process and approval process, and then they uh, negotiate collectively. There's usually a lead province that collectively negotiates the price with, um, with the drug manufacturer. And the reason why that's important, and I know sometimes that's frustrating, um, is because those who are looking for a particular drug to be quickly advanced and quickly approved, um, I think everybody understands why that is. But we also know that just around the corner is probably another life-saving drug and another drug that's going to impact uh, another group of Manitobans and Canadians who are looking for that. And, and we need to ensure that you know, we have the, um, the funding for those drugs as well. And so uh, the reason that this national process of um, negotiation for prices came about many years ago was to get the best dr uh, drug prices for all Canadians so that there would be resources available for as many of these life-saving drugs as possible. That's part of what slows things uh, down, is that negotiation. And then beyond that, even in Manitoba, we have a bit of a different process in terms of drugs going on to the formulary that is now just changing because of legislative change that was made a few days ago in this past session. So in most other provinces, for a drug to get onto the formulary, it's essentially a regulatory process and is done at the regulatory level. In Manitoba, for whatever reason, it's been this way for many years and it was this way when I was health minister as well, there's an added step uh, that is a ministerial process. And so we're essentially uh, reverting with the legislation that was passed a few days ago uh, to a purely regulatory uh, process so that things should happen a little faster. I don't want to suggest that that'll be uh, you know, months faster, but it'll, it'll certainly narrow the gap between what we've maybe seen with, with other provinces because we won't have that additional step. Yeah, I mean, the indi individual dosage uh, costs I'll leave to those who are or, you know, responsible for the, the cost portion of it. But obviously, you know, under our, under our pharmacare program, it's, it's income-based or it's a deductible that is, that is applied based, based on your income. It's the most comprehensive, I think, pharmacare program in the country. Uh, it's the most equitable um, program in the country. It's one that I think in some ways the federal government would like to model more broadly across uh, the country. But, you know, how much you end up paying has someone to do with what your deductible level is. That's a good question already. I like I like it already. <laughs> no, 
So as the Premier mentioned, after we go through that pan-Canadian process in terms of drug pricing, and then it's rolled out in, in each uh, provincial jurisdiction, and Manitoba has different uh, processes than the other provinces do. And as the Premier mentioned, we have um, streamlined that process so that uh, it may not be months uh, sooner, but much faster. Uh, so my announcement uh, last week about changing from regulation to policy in terms of adding new drugs to the formulary will certainly speed things up and so we look forward to new developments, scientific developments that will bring drugs to the market uh, to provide Manitobans with better health. Our government, so our government continues to, under the Ministry of Mental Health, Wellness and Recovery, to take an evidence-informed, safe and um, uh, proven uh, process in terms of providing supports to our addictions, uh, to our community that's struggling with addictions and substance use. This is an issue that we take very, very seriously. That's why the ministry was created. That's why we put over $50 million into 33 programs. And that's why we're currently, as a department, going across the province and talking to individuals with lived experience and healthcare experts about um, how we change the system to better respond to the needs of individuals who are struggling with substance use. Yes, that's a good question. Um, uh, Trikafta is effective for uh, up to 90% of the over 2,000 genetic mutations that make up cystic fibrosis. So we still have a little ways to go, and uh, there are some encouraging um, research results on the horizon. But uh, right now, uh, with this, the access of Trikafta, we should be able to have 90% uh, of our CF population uh, improve their lives. Uh, there are actually, if I may, um, 128 people on the uh, cystic fibrosis uh, registry uh, that we have on record in, uh, in Manitoba. Uh, so uh, we don't have the stats on what their particular genetic mutation is, but we do have access to that and we are in process of getting that, so we'll be able to uh, crunch the numbers a little more closely around that. <laughs> 